assessment of the conditions of use. Uh, uh, so there are not only like the corporates that are closed, that they don't give freedom and autonomy because they are proprietary software, because they are proprietary license, because they concentrate the, the, the exchange of the, the value into profitability. But there are all other um, uh, hybrid methods in which there is profitability for the infrastructure provider in order to sustain it, but then it's based on free software, free license, and, and freedom and autonomy. So, and then you have other cases that, like Wikipedia, that is, is both, like it's not for profit, it's, it's free and autonomous, but uh, again, like the distinction is, is, is difficult because there are hybrid models in the, in the middle that in some senses are, are, are positive examples, I think. And particularly, like, I think it would be very good to, to try to, to make a, um, a, a synergy between the corporate, uh, uh, excuse me, the cooperative tradition, the social economy tradition and the cooperative tradition uh, into the common base peer production because actually they could provide models of having this element of forms of econo economy that would be uh, guaranteed the sustainability and would deal with the a part of making some profitability to guarantee the sustainability, but at the same time they would go into, into principles of organizing it that would be more uh, close to the common base peer production. Um, we go back to the floor. Maybe I, I, I will ask answer more about what Helen asked uh, after afterward. David. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Rozas, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Surrey. Uh, more than a question, in my case, is a thought I would like to share. <laughs> so I, I introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah I. Uh, <laughs> I'm David Rothas and a PhD student at the University of Surrey. That so is a partner uh, of the project. And also a partner of the project, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a thought on this discussion on the, um, uh, the design of the technology not being neutral. I absolutely agree with that. And I also share this concern on the network becoming more and more centralized. Like if you think, uh, for instance, always a good example for me is the email. And uh, I think. It's not neutral in the sense that there is some kind of political or philosophical uh, question sometimes we have to ask ourselves. And uh, email is a good example. I mean, if imagine all the email of the world just hosted in one company, it would be terrible. And now it's what is happening with Facebook or Twitter, all these kind of services. And at some point there was some kind of let's say, political or philosophical decision, technical, but saying, okay, no, we need a federated protocol. So uh, yeah, with these concerns, <laughs> Um, my point is, I think somehow the cycle is starting to change. So, uh, how can we engage users on the importance of uh, using decentralized architectures? And also, if you believe that there is some kind of responsibility from technical people on uh, kind of philosophical responsibility on uh, making products that are using this, this kind of architecture. But especially, how, how can we engage users on, on the importance of this? I see, like for instance, with all the case of Snowden and NSA, there has been now some progress, but still I have the impression it doesn't reach everyone. It's just sometimes like only for geeks and these kind of things. So this is something that is a concern. It's just a thought. I'm David Lañado from Barcelona Media, and we are participating in a kind of uh, sibling project, a uh, decent project, uh, which is in the, in the same call. And uh, there are a lot of things in common, and we, are, we have already started to, to collaborate in some way. And um, um, in our project, we also aim to, to build a decentralized platform. And um, we have two, two pilots, one about uh, direct democracy and one about uh, uh, um, complementary currencies. And uh, so my question is again um, uh, about the, the value, because um, I'm thinking, Adam was saying that there is a kind of alienation no? in this. Uh, but I see more alienation in the way we are living now. No? We are all good people, then we put money in the bank and we just don't care. So it, it's, 
it's uh, probably the, the only way we can we can we can go is uh, assuming some responsibility about that and so uh, going to measure something but uh, at the same time so b because of course you want to change the way you know and to make this uh, uh, to change the way of, of production in the in the society but uh, at the same time, if you go to measure something in these communities that are now based more on um, maybe something uh, closer to the gift economy or just free participation, then you have um, the fact of measuring is uh, influencing the process. So I'm just curious to know what you think of uh, alternative currencies and if there can be a connection between uh, the, the, the way you are measuring value and uh, some kind of, uh, of currency. More questions? Interventions, comments? Okay, while well you think, I, I want to say two words about this that also is part, in part uh, the, the uh, one question that uh, was raised by Hélène. To explain uh, where we are, and, uh, but not sure about where we are, we are going to arrive because it's really a challenging issue, no? how to measure value in uh, these new forms of production and uh, which metrics. Uh, uh, th there are different, very many different layer issues which are uh, going to come out if you try to analyze uh, these, these questions. And, and uh, we don't have uh, any consolidated answer and I agree with Adam that uh, at the end, uh, probably the best way to think uh, this process we are immersed into is uh, to make a comparison with the previous value regime that is uh, that had a very long uh, history and a, an history of struggles that uh, uh, progressively institutionalized a value measure and it was a, a combination of uh, conditions and uh, social conflicts and uh, theoretical innovations that brought to this debt regime. What we observe in, and uh, Adam in that is a very good, good uh, uh, analyst, is that there is a crisis of the established uh, value regime and commons-based peer production is uh, just, uh, if you like, uh, the most uh, exemplar uh, um, uh, demonstration of this crisis, but there are a lot of uh, elements which can be uh, uh, used as arguments to uh, identify weaknesses and failures and and uh, and crises in the value regime. I want uh, I don't want to enter in this discourse, but of course we have plenty of evidences that there is a crisis and there is a corruption in the system of value we lived uh, into. And more and more, it's not able even to give account of the most important aspects that characterize value production in our societies. Uh, however, to be concrete, uh, to answer to the question, uh, we are tr going to try to identify uh, uh, conceptually strategies to face this challenge, and also we are going to try to identify indicators and, and metrics. Uh, we already are in the middle of this <laughs> work, uh, and these days we are going to discuss, among other things, uh, this first hypothesis that we, are work we have worked. Uh, at the same time, we, have, we are aware that uh, we are not going to solve this problem, uh, and, uh, and as I said, that, that there are also ambivalences in, in addressing uh, this issue and in trying to, to find uh, uh, strategies and solutions, possible solutions to, to, this, uh, to these issues. And, uh, and also when we think about value, there are, as you already said, there are different uh, uh, dimensions uh, of analysis that uh, that you need to introduce in, in the framework uh, you apply. For example, it's not the same to try to uh, uh, assess the value in terms of the whole uh, mm, <coughs> value produced by a community and uh, the distinct and, and, and differentiated value of the individual contributions to that whole. 
they, they are two different dimensions, just to say one. Or another very challenging, typical uh, difficulty you find when you try to apply a value <coughs> assessment i into knowledge, information, digital uh, uh, production is that uh, you don't have a clear space where to close the measure because uh, the production typically escapes from any kind of confine of border. So it's typically uh, and, and continuous in time. So it's reused and reproduced and et cetera, et cetera, with modifications. So it's, there are various different uh, challenges. What we can do practically is to try to progress in our capacity to frame the problems, the challenges, and in understanding also the implications of different possible solutions. Um, and an another issue I would like to address is the, again in terms of ambivalences, I would address it, is, is the relationship with the markets or with the, or with the corporations, because uh, of course, there is a problem of, uh, uh, of uh, capture, if you like, of, this is typical, as historically, capture of the commons uh, uh, on, from the point of view of uh, capitalistic exploitation. Um, and it's happening also in this case, in these cases, in these new forms of production. Of course, we have a, lo a lot of, of uh, examples of this kind of uh, evolution. But also I would say that we have to observe and to analyze and to understand, the, the, I would say, the opposite uh, uh, process that is taking place. That is that more and more, this is interesting, at least to uh, understand it and, and to deepen the, uh, the implications of this process, is that more and more uh, for-profit companies are adopting commons-based peer production, even uh, even if that in, uh, in makes impossible to exploit the product of their uh, production because it, in general terms, that means, think about the open source, that means that you cannot commercialize your product. Even in that situation, there are various reasons that many times suggest to companies that are mainly for profit in their strategy to adopt this model of production. This is interesting because it's expanding the commons in, in, uh, in the world. It's interesting because uh, we see that the commons provide, in many cases, a competitive strategy that is adopted by the companies. And uh, of course, open, open a lot of uh, uh, areas of research which are ambivalent, but I think, uh, as I said before, that ambivalences are unavoidable in, in, uh, in, in this new world, and we have to develop a capacity to understand these ambivalences, to work with these ambivalences, and to find uh, innovative solutions to get uh, uh, the best from, from these possibilities. No, I would like to reply to Marco in the sense of, I think it's important to distinguish a uh, peer-to-peer production from a uh, common-based peer production. In the sense of, uh, I, I have tried to make this element when presenting the criteria of the limitation in the sense of, when you are saying that the, co the cor corporates are incorporating common-based peer production, I would say they are incorporating peer production. Like they are incorporating peer-to-peer uh, -peer production. But uh, I don't think uh, they, they could be defined as a commons. And I think, or depends, depends. There are cases that yes. But I think it's important that to stress this distinction between what is a peer-to-peer -peer process and which, which are the peer processes that also have the element of having a commons or resulting into a commons. And uh, I want to also point in, in building upon two ideas that has emerged, this element that Marco ha that has said that it's very difficult to establish the boundaries also of the product itself because these communities also, uh, 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 wha when, the, when they favor the replicability or the, the derivativity or the uh, generability you know, of, the, of, of what do they produce you know, is one of the characteristics. It's very difficult to establish where 
were not only the community, but also in terms of, of value generated and product res uh, res um, resource generated where to establish the, where to put a, a, a line, but also connected to what was uh, uh, the professor from University of Barcelona, that I don't remember the name, was pointing to about uh, actually the, 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 the individuals in these communities are autonomous inside of the community because they, they can choose what, what to do, they don't follow a command and, and all of this, but outside of the community, they are restricted through material needs in the sense of how people sustain themselves in, uh, outside of the community. And these communities, uh, we, we have uh, uh, started to analyze models of sustainability of these communities, but they, their models of sustainability only address the, the collective dimension how to pay the cost of the servers, or how to pay the cost of the URL, or, or whatever, the kind of the collective uh, uh, um, costs. But they don't have a strategies for individual sustainability, or, or it's much more limited, the concept as, as a concept of the, com the community assuming the individual sustainability is much less present. And I think both ideas uh, combined together bring uh, uh, and others bring very much into the need of uh, uh, to put into the table also the element of the of the basic income as a as a, a as a need for uh, uh, like it would be a, a good thing for for supporting common based food production in the sense of uh, when, when at the beginning Marco was saying that the, the institu political institutions and public policies in general has not been able to understand the, the force of common basic production or to regulate in favor of it, I think it would be really good that, the, the, that, the, that they change their approach and one of the elements of incorporating is the element of uh, guaranteeing and basic income in society so people can contribute to this a uh, uh, common basic production format and, and, and in this line, line to think that in many kind of moments of the discussion it have emerged the relationship between markets and the common basic production but also the relationship in the, between political institutions and, and, and these common uh, formats and I think as the, as the state regulation and the states are essential for the market functioning Without the market, without the state, the markets would fall, fall down. And, and now, more than ever, I think this is the case. The same could be said in terms of the commons. That, in the sense of, we could think about uh, uh, public policies and roles in which the, the new forms of political institutions, not the ones that we have now, but uh, could support uh, the commons and could promote the commons as they now doing it for uh, for the market. And one way would be through the basic income. Summer. Um, answering David's uh, thought <laughs> that uh, how to engage users and the importance on decentralized technologies and this stuff. Well, I think that um, we don't need to actually. I mean, of course, it's as, as Snowden actions and similar stuff making uh, awareness of privacy issues much more mainstream, and this is fantastic. But um, but I think that this approach uh, would prove right or prove better in practice, not necessarily by communicating much more. And uh, we have an example uh, that hmm? in the second browser wars, um, Firefox surpassed Internet Explorer, not because users were very con uh, very aware of that it, this is was free open source software and the other was proprietary commercial software, but because Firefox provided uh, a sec very secure platform, not um, infected, uh, not easily infected by viruses like Internet Explorer, provided a lot of extensions it had a community, it was better. And it was better in a sense that the model that Firefox had be behind was providing things that the model of uh, Internet Explorer couldn't provide. So the, the one model surpassed the other one. And this is what I personally believe that we should enhance, that the model of a decentralized free open source approach 
would be essentially b would work much better and the f and, and provide things that proprietary centralized models cannot provide to the community. Uh, would you like to add anything? Okay, so if there aren't uh, questions, I suggest uh, we stop the public event and uh, we go to the bar and we continue our conversation in a more informal way. Uh, ah, yes, just uh, to say before going that uh, if you like to stay in contact uh, with the project, uh, we are also would like to experiment uh, during the project uh, strategies to <laughs> follow the spirit, if you like, of commons based peer production. And so we, we are going to try to, to make, uh, to find ways to open up the process uh, during its own uh, uh, development. However, if you are interested in staying in contact with the project, uh, you can uh, go to the website that is uh, peer to peer value.eu. You can uh, give your, uh, your contact here. There is a outside, there is a sheet of paper where you can leave our, your contact and we keep you informed through a newsletter. You can follow the Twitter account, which is peer to peer value. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and you can contact us uh, during this, uh, this moment of uh, meeting that we are going to have at the bar, of course, and we can uh, establish a contact in that way, etc. So, in the meetup, uh, we have invited local uh, initiatives like we share Open Knowledge Foundation, uh, Goteo. Uh, Amical Wikipedia, they are going to be there. There is going to be also small announces, announcements and uh, a possibility to interact with the directory and also to interact with uh, Kune. So uh, it's going to be a networking kind of possibility. And some drinks and CC music. Okay, so thank you very much uh, to everybody and, uh, and see you soon at the bar. <laughs>